All right. So uh, my name is Amanda Swift, and I'm a children's book illustrator. And hopefully uh, I'll be publishing my book next year. It's a lot to go into it, as you guys are probably finding out as, as an author. So, um, you know, there's there's just a lot of complicated um, steps and um, throughout the whole publishing journey. And there seems to be, I'm part of a um, really large Facebook group. Um, I moderate it. I'm one of the main two moderators and there's over 200,000 people. And this comes up a lot, like, you know, finding an illustrator, how to find an illustrator. I see people posting uh, requests for an illustrator and I can tell they haven't quite figured out, you know, um, maybe some of the information they need to do. And I know a lot of the authors I talk with, you know, still have a lot of questions on that front. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to just kind of record it and also answer questions from some real authors that are looking for an illustrator to try to hopefully um, kind of demystify the whole process. And at the end, you're going to feel confident as you're choosing an illustrator because this is a huge investment for authors to do. You know, this is not just like $100. This is this is a huge investment into their dream and into your into your dream. And so I want to make sure that you're going to choose someone that's going to be amazing for your book. Um, that's going to be the right person. And then you're going to figure out like what the right type of style is so that, you know, the, the, the goal is to help your book be the most successful possible. Cause there's a lot of barriers and a lot of things that could go wrong with any business or any venture like this. And so this is hopefully just kind of removing some of those obstacles um, to give you the best chance to be successful. So um, here's a little bit about me, like I mentioned. So um, I have illustrated three published children's books for um, authors, and I'm working on two right now that will be released uh, most likely in this year. And then I have five more lined up after that, one of them being my own. So four others for other authors and one for me. So it's it's been just an explosion after the third one published. Um, oh, okay, there's an extra screen. I thought I just shared the audience screen. Sorry about that. Let's see if we can make that go away. Did that fix it? Make that one even smaller. Okay, awesome. I didn't realize that that would would uh, overlap. So sorry about that. All right. So, um, so I have had some experience with um, publishing, and I've also done other graphic design and other odd illustration jobs as well throughout this time. Um, and again, I've moderated a big group as well as two other ones. So I've just kind of seen a lot of that come up and, uh, I live in Ohio. So I know we've been getting a lot of flack lately. Uh, Columbus, Ohio is not, you know, weird. I promise <laughs> we don't have anything weird going on, but, um, we're just, uh, just normal Midwesterners here. And, um, I have a husband and two boys and two border collie doodles. So, um, yeah, always life is interesting here. And like I said, Melissa is sick, so she's not coming here today, but she also moderates that large group with me and does a lot of work there as well. And um, she's illustrated two children's books and then she's done graphic novels and things like that. So um, definitely uh, show her some love. And um, we definitely want to have you guys kind of introduce yourself a little bit more. So it looked like... Um, Terry had posted that uh, she's a, a picture book illustrator interested on how authors find the illustrator, which is great. And it's good to know like what our author should be looking for because you want to be that person, right? So that's awesome. And then Jamie, um, oh, so 19 books a day. Uh, that's awesome. So you've been probably doing it way longer than me. <laughs> so I hope to be there one day. Uh, and then uh, Jamie, if you want to share a bit about you, um, I think you can get on the audio. I don't know if I can switch you over to the video, uh, like to be the main presenter, but that's a, up to you, Jamie. 
so she's from upstate New York, uh, Jamie Gartner, and uh, is a book coach, mostly from MR, but sometimes my writers are interested in children's books. Awesome. So yeah, this, you can definitely transfer this information to, you know, your different, um, you know, coach clients. And, you know, some of this is, uh, is going to be obviously more specific children's books, but in general, as you're looking for someone, there's going to be a lot of potential things that, that could be transferable to any, you know, kind of situation when you're looking for someone who's going to do a service for you, a paid service. And Jamie uh, commented, I also have my own kids book that I want to get illustrated. Awesome. So yeah, this will definitely be super helpful for you. So um, I know it seems counterintuitive, but before you start on your illustrating journey, it's really important that you have a final uh, manuscript, right? So if you don't have a final manuscript, then, you know, things could change you know, maybe even drastically. And that means that all the work your illustrator would have done, you might have to redo, which they're not going to be happy with because they have deadlines and, and delay, you know, they, they don't like delays because then the next person in line that they're illustrating for might be delayed. Um, but it also may cause extra expense and frustration in the process as well. We don't want that. So it's really important to get a finalized manuscript before starting with an illustrator. Now, it could be the illustrator is not ready for six months, so you're going to have time. So it's not necessarily you can't start looking, but you definitely want to have that finished manuscript before you start with the illustrator. Um, and then editor does more than just like make sure everything's spelled correctly and the grammar is correct. They will actually um, make sure that the wording and how you're speaking in the book is age appropriate, um, using the right words for that age group. So it could be too large of a group or too large of a word that's too complex for a young child or kids don't talk like that. So like as an adult, sometimes we forget like kids talk differently and they wouldn't say something so grown up, right? Um it could be all different types of stuff like that. It could be that they could help you strengthen um, your storyline. And then that would mean that the illustrations change. Um, yeah. And sometimes the manuscript doesn't match the text after edits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The illustrations don't match. I mean, yeah. I know, I know what I meant. So yeah. So then once you've changed the story, then you probably would need to change the illustrations um and then that could be a big issue now the other part of that is you don't just need to rely on editors you could rely on like book critique as well or you could get it read by your target audience so you know go and read it to kids or read it to to children that you know that would be in the right age group to kind of get their feedback uh kids are brutally honest most of the time so they're great critique uh partners um because they will let you know <laughs> do they like it not like it what part they didn't like um so then the next step is still not to look for the illustrator necessarily. It's to research styles. So you're not going to go and start driving a car if you didn't learn about the car and how to drive it first. Um, and, and as the self-publisher, you are the art director. Um, you are the one making the decisions on like who to pick for art and does that look good or not for my book. And so while you're waiting for all that red ink to come back from the editor, um, you can research illustration styles. There's lots of them out there. And some of them are not as appropriate for young kids. Like, like maybe it's more detailed and, 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 and elaborate. And, and then for a toddler book, you really want it on the simpler side, right? So there could be lots of things where that would not be appropriate uh, styles. And so you have to do some research. Uh, I think it's great to go into a library in the kids section um, to, of course, look online um, there's lots of different ways that you can research different styles to figure out what you like um, and what kind of works. So it's not so much like, I guess you can find out like, how do people lay out the book? So Jamie asked, you mean like spot illustration versus full page, watercolor versus pencil? That is part of it, but it's like the overall feeling of the style. So you can see some um some ideas here of what the different styles could be. There's Lots more than this, but there's like the simple picture book style. So a lot of white backgrounds, very simple art on the front. Um, there's like the soft pastel. Um, so that's going to be, um, you know, very, very sweet and and nothing, nothing like really bright necessarily. And uh, the drawings tend to be quite soft as well. And then there's decorative and embellished. So you know, there's going to be lots and lots and lots of detail and embellishments. 
Um, and that's great for, for certain types of stories, but maybe not other ones. Like it's supposed to be funny. I don't know if this would be like the best option, right? Because you're, you're so many other details, you might miss the punchline uh, in the picture. Um, retro texture. So again, this is like a lot of it comes down to preference as well. You know, do you like this style? Are you going to feel happy with your book in this style? So these are like the overall illustrative styles. So then as you're looking at books at the library or a bookstore online, whatever, if you can get like eBooks, you can see like, you know, there's a variance typically of like, you know, the spot illustration, which is like the individual smaller illustration versus like a whole big two page spread with lots of detail. And so you can see that those are, are very throughout, but the illustrator will probably give you feedback on that. So um, it's good to kind of know like how they're being used in other books. Cause again, you have to be the deciding factor, um, but it's not going to be necessarily as important until you start talking with the illustrator cause they may have their own ideas. Um, the style that's trending right now. Um, if you wanna look for styles that are trending, you can look at traditionally published books. Now, by the time they get published, it could be one to two years from when they started working on it. So it's not always like 100% because they're already working on the next ones, right? So they're already working on the next new styles uh, from the, in the next one to two years or for the next year. So it takes them a long time because they have a lot of um, investment into it. So they want to make sure it's correct. There's a lot of cooks in the kitchen per se. And so um, you could look at those just to kind of see where the trends are moving towards. But I think it's even more important, um, again, to get that feedback from your target audience um, you know, show them different styles, you know, which ones of these do you like better? Which pictures do you like better? Or which, which are your favorite books, right? So you can do lots of things where you could kind of give a little bit more of a beat, you know, and realize it's a small group of kids. So, you know, that could be, um, could be uh, erroneous, right? So if all those kids like them, but then like they were the outliers. So, but yeah, I, I think it's important that you love the style and that, um, you know, in the end of it too. So like, you're not just picking based on what's popular, but also because you think it's a, it's a wonderful style for your book. So the other part to understand is the process. So when an illustrator, when you pick an illustrator, there's going to be a process and this is just a very brief view of the process, but you know, they're going to be talking with you, understanding what you want. Then they're going to be doing like character design sketches and then finalize those uh, for your main characters. And then they're going to be doing like a whole storyboard where they like lay out the entire book, you know, and like make sure the flow is working right. Um, they might, depending on their, their work style, obviously, because some people don't do line art. Um, so it could be a sketch and then line art and then flat color, or it could be sketch and then flat color. So it really just depends on the artist, but there should be where you kind of have a little bit of, um, you know, you'd have to check with the illustrator how much input or how much visibility do you have into their workflow process? Do they just show you sketches and then the final art, or do you get to kind of be a little bit more involved? Because, um, you know, that's a little bit of a way for you to make sure that things aren't going too far in the wrong direction before, um, you know, they've already spent all this time and effort making it finalized. And you're like, well, I don't love those colors. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's important to kind of have that communication with any illustrator. What is their process? How involved can you want to be? How involved do you want to be, right? Like if you're like, I don't want to you do you deal with the colors. I trust you. I don't want to have anything to do with it. Then maybe they don't need to involve you with that. So the difference between a sketch, storyboard, and line art. So I so let's just start with storyboarding. That's usually first if if the illustrator does it. It's a very simplified version. So it would just maybe be like think about stick figures and like basic shapes and sometimes they can be a little bit more detailed um you know maybe show some lighting or things like that like if there's something really dramatic in the scene um there could be some shading uh, i mean just like colors in there to kind of help you differentiate objects but they're just kind of like an impression of the page just like a really quick small um impression and so then the sketch phase is when you take that and you actually, you know, kind of build it out. And I don't know if if it'll let me zoom in here. Hopefully that's working for you guys. 
so you can see here everything's really rough and um you know i've just kind of like had the had more details on the idea so for example you can see the um of course sloth here and then he's much more refined over here right so so between this phase there was a line art phase where where because i i did line art so again there might be some people that don't use line art that much so that that might not be a, a phase for them but um there was a line art phase which which did like the outlines of everything and then i colored it flat so so things are going to be much more refined so it's like a refining process to get from really really rough idea that you can they can put down quickly enough that if you go mm, no let's try something else that it wasn't like an hour or two of their time you know they just kind of um they might have been thinking about it for a while but in terms of the actual getting the idea out there you're just trying to communicate a general idea and then a sketch is going to be fleshing out that idea you know getting it more detailed a line art is going to be refining it uh, to what you would be finalized or the flat color if they don't do lines um, and then they're going to finalize it with all the details, uh, shadowing and highlighting textures, uh, you know, that sort of thing, final, final colors. Um, yeah. So it just kind of is a refining process. So it might kind of look a little, you know, again, flat or messy because it's just like in the beginning stages. So just be aware of that, but also, um, you know, if you want to be involved, make sure the illustrator is going to allow you to be involved in that. So, because there's unfortunately artificial intelligence out there and there's all kinds of things where this is one way to ensure that your, your illustrator is not using artificial intelligence. Oh, thank you, Jamie. So yeah, it, it really, the shadowing and highlight, the last phase, it really just makes everything come to life, uh, at least in my process. So it all looks very basic. And then like, <laughs> it goes from that to this uh, for my authors. So yeah, I'm like, just wait to the end. I promise it'll be way different. <laughs> um, all right, so preparation. Um, there are things that the author needs to do before the illustrator gets started. So you could be in talks with them because again, maybe they're not available for a month, two months, th six months, whatever. So but these are things that you'll need to have prepared. So things like the manuf manuscript professionally edited, finalized, we talked about that, choosing a method of printing. So are you going to go with offset printing, which is when you buy in bulk from either locally or overseas and have it shipped in? Are you going to go with print on demand and which ones? Are you going to do ebook? Because this is, you know, really important. So when the illustrator gets started, they can use the correct size of the book and uh, formats as well. So each different printer has different, template guides of like this is how much extra you need to leave for when we go to trim it and you know like that kind of stuff so it gets really complicated and technical um but all of this is, is very important before the illustrator gets started um and it can cause delays because sometimes it takes longer than you think to get this information from you know and choosing um that could take a while depending on on your preferences all right, so ask the printer to send templates or specs. So that's if you can. Uh, sometimes they won't send a template. They'll just send you information, which is pretty common. And so either, usually you have a book designer. Uh, you find and choose a book designer to work in in, in uh, the same time as the illustrator. Uh, rarely the illustrator is the book designer, but that's a lot less common. Um, and so either way, you, you would need a, to have someone that can make uh, like the template guide. Um, it's like a... It has all the lines and, and guides ready to go, uh, knows what the, the image size should be, and then gather reference images, the mood board, um, that sort of stuff. So you can, um, like we uh, talked about earlier, you can create a mood board and kind of like compile your own version of this. Um, I, I, I didn't mention mood board, but that's what I was kind of meaning by this page is mood board. So you can kind of create your own sort of like, this is what I want to see. So if you say you want to, uh, Jamie asked about, so we can't just tell an illustrator it's an eight by 10 for KDP. They'll need more details about bleeding gutter. So if you were to tell them it's an eight by 10 for KDP, um, there is like in that specific instance, uh, KDP has like a little thing you plug in your specs to, and then, cause it needs to know how many pages because the binding will change depending on like the thickness will change on how many pages you have. So there's like a little um, 
calculator, the NKDP that you would plug in the information of like even paper thickness and like all kinds of nonsense. And so once you have chosen all of that, then it will give you the parameters that you need for uh, the, the cover, for example, um, as, as well as the interior. So that would all be something that, that you can gather from KDP um, and, and give to them. And they would, they should be able to guide you or the book designer to guide you in that or help you with that, uh, especially if you have a book designer, which I highly recommend. Um, book designer is just a, a brief thing because it's like, what is that? So what they do is, is they add all of your words onto the illustrator's images. And not only that, but then they create the title page, the copyright page, um, any um, any uh, back matter, which is like maybe you have like about the author, about the illustrator. Maybe there's some like extra information you want to provide about the book, you know, note for the parents. Um, they also format the cover and create a custom title for you, um, you know, the back and the front cover. And they just make it the files all ready to go for you to upload into your preferred printer. So they kind of do like a lot of that kind of designing of everything and making sure and they kind of help give some feedback on like you know the actual like they'll be part of the whole process of like okay that flows well or you know it's another eye basically in 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 looking at the illustrations so they kind of can help you with the art direction uh art director part but yeah i mean just knowing that you want eight by ten and kdp that should um help you get like 95% of the way there. So if you can make those decisions, which is sometimes harder than people realize to, to narrow it down. And and like, for example, with um with printing on demand, you can do Ingress Mark and KDP at the same time. So then it's like, you want to make sure you're choosing a size that works for both. And then you have to kind of account for that in the template. So kind of knowing that ahead of time is really important. So the illustrator could pick where and how to fit the text, but it's also the book designer to help with that too. So they may have some really cool ideas on making text really big to like emphasize some big moment. Like, you know, when they shouted roar and instead of just putting that in a normal line, maybe they want to like make that huge. And so the book designer might have some really interesting ideas that the illustrator and them can kind of collaborate on. And of course the author needs to be involved because they make decisions and everything. So then that way they can design the book while the illustrator is doing their parts. So they go, okay, if you're doing the big roar, then I, you know, I think it'd be really cool if the dinosaurs, you know, on the left side with his mouth open and then the roar comes out of it. So they can kind of work together in tandem. Yeah. So that's, and that doesn't often happen because people don't realize they'll wait to the end and then they'll just get like somebody at the end to come in and while you can do that, you're going to miss some of that really cool, like kind of collaboration. Like if that page with the dinosaur and the raw, um, if the dinosaur, if the illustrator didn't think of it ahead of time, um, the designer would have to ask for that page to be redone. And that's probably not going to happen. So they're just going to fit their work within your parameters that's already there. And so that will limit like how great the book can be. So I would highly recommend always, um, choosing an illustrator and designer that can work together at the same time. Uh, all right. So now we're finally getting to some of the meat of how to find an illustrator. So there's obviously some big red flag areas to avoid, um, or things that you should probably avoid. Um, fiber.com, upwork.com, they tend to be quite explo exploitive and often don't produce good results. There's a lot of scammers and kind of fraud and plagiarism and all kinds of nonsense there. So I, I would not recommend a uh, fiber upwork. And then there is um, anybody that sends you a cloud linked uh, portfolio, like their portfolio is on Google Drive or on some sort of cloud. That means it's not public. And when it's not public, that means there's no other eyes to flag it and say this is wrong. Like this is plagiarism or this is AI or whatever. And so I would be really concerned if that's their only portfolio. Um, seeing as there's plenty of free options, social media, um, things like that. Um, and it's very inexpensive overall as an illustrator to get a website these days. There's lots of them, even free options for websites. So um, they only want to send you work in like direct messages. So if you are contacting them via social media 
or whatever, and they only want to do that via direct message, I would be concerned. Again, no public portfolio whatsoever. Um, they've recently opened up their account um, on social media or like say on uh, Behance or things like that. And then they have a low activity on that account. So those are all things to avoid while you're looking. And that's not an exhaustive list. That's just like a, you know, shorthand list. So things um, that are good. So we have a directory. Of course, I'm going to put that first, illustratedirectory.com. And so that's something I just started a couple months ago. We've already got like over 50 illustrators on there. Now I didn't do like a full vet where I like talk to each one and interview them and things like that. But I did check, you know, their website, their social media, um, that sort of stuff and make sure they look legit. They're also in that big group. And so I checked their history there to make sure everything's looking good and they're not, um, you know, having a lot of um, warnings or uh, remove posts or remove comments um, and that sort of stuff. So, um, that's, you know, semi vetted for you, but I would always recommend you to do your own checking. Readsy.com, they're very selective, um, especially now that they've grown on who they let in. Like, for example, um, I just tried to get in. They're like, well, you have to have five published books. That's like a minimum. I'm like, well, I'm at three. I'll be there soon by the end of the year. So I'll try again. Um, so they're, they're a lot more selective. And then SCBWI, which is Society of Children's Books, Writers, and Illustrator.org. Um, they are a great organization. You should join them anyway. They're $85 a year. You get a lot of resources, a publishing guide. Um, they usually have local chapters where you can meet up with other authors and illustrators. So you can meet an illustrator that way. And they also have conferences, webinars, all kinds of stuff and other resources. So highly recommend them um, to join. And then there's childrensillustrators.com. So it's kind of a pay to play. So you pay like 300 and some dollars a year to be an illustrator on there. Um, so obviously that will remove a lot of uh, bad apples because no one's just going to pay a random 300 some dollars a year to just scam people. So that's that's another good option. Um, obviously, if they have website portfolios, so you can either search them via Google or if someone like, um, you know, on, on a social media, you know, again, they need a, a public website portfolio. Um, you'll see Behance.net. And it's, I feel like it's a mixed bag, but it's, it's, a, I believe it's a free portfolio website and some people can't afford that. So that's another great one. Social media, there's like Instagram and Kara, um, website groups. And I do have a link on that one. Um, so that's like, I have two of my own and then there's the one I moderate, which has over 200,000 people. So, um, if you want to look up, there's some other good ones out there. If you want to look for Facebook groups and then, um, conferences, uh, book fairs and events, um, look at art colleges and universities. Um, I don't recommend paying them too little, right? You have to pay them a fair market, but they um, often will love to do that if they're they're trying to get an art degree um, and they have that as one of their projects to do uh, an illustration, especially if they're going for a children's book illustration. Um, just be aware of your first time author trying to work with a first time illustrator. That's a little bit dicey. So just be careful. Um, because you're, they're not going to be able to guide you. All right. And then um, local art community organizations. So I have one in Columbus, Ohio, which is like Columbus. Um, oh, what is it? No. Anyway, there's a local art community that I'm part of that can meet up and find other. And it's not just um, visual arts. It's all kinds of different arts. And they have grants and things like that, too. And then word of mouth from the authors. So like if you start to get to know other authors, you know, hey, who and you love their books and who illustrated them and be like, you know, hey, can you recommend? Um, so when you are reaching out to illustrators or you're posting like on a Facebook group or something like that, that you're like, hey, I'm looking for an illustrator. Some really helpful things is to include is the theme. So a brief summary what the book is about, right? Like maybe I, I don't like to draw like, mechanical things so if the book was about mechanical stuff I'd be like I don't even need a post because like that's not my bag of tea right so um the theme could be really helpful and then the number of illustrations because that kind of like lets us know how big of a project it is and then the target age group so again you know my style maybe don't lend to um babies which it does but it, maybe mine doesn't so then I'm not going to post because it's a it's for toddlers and babies um, so that kind of helps too. And then um, this also, by sharing this information, it shows the illustrator that you've done your homework and you're not going to be like, 
coming to us and then going, what do you mean the target age group? I haven't thought about that. So like, it kind of just helps us to know that you're serious as well. So then desired art mediums. So some people really want traditional art. So I know, um, Jamie, you mentioned earlier about that. So you can specify that maybe you do want traditional or watercolor. I've seen some really cool where they take paper and they rip it up and they make really cool, like, sceneries with that or they use like pressed flowers so maybe you're looking for something really unique um or you're totally fine with anything so you can uh, mark any desired art mediums uh, desired styles attach examples on your mood board so that's really helpful um to kind of know what you're aiming for and then deadlines so maybe you're wanting to get it done to be published before christmas but if you post it now and maybe it seems like enough time, but that's not enough time because it takes three to six months, right? So then we can know, okay, like we need to let them know like that's not going to be viable or that's going to be a rush job. So, um, you know, I don't have that in my schedule, right? To do what they want me to do, which is drop everything and work on this 24 seven. So, um, so the deadline can help. And then um Illustrators can be booked in advance. So just keep in mind with your deadline that maybe to get the right illustrator, you might have to be flexible on that. Uh, budget. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, but it does help if you do have a budget in mind. Um, a lot of um, this is a big mystifying thing because there's just not a lot of information out there. People don't want to talk about money. You know, it's always a taboo topic, but I'm trying to like remove that. So um, SCBWI and Reedsy got together, um, and, and, and 2020 and made a study. And at that time, which is, you know, almost five years ago, um, it was three to 12,000, um, range on average for illustrating, um, for independent self-published children's books. So, um, that can at least give you a ballpark idea. I know they tend to be more like three or like five to eight is a lot of times what I see. Um, out there but just to kind of give you an idea I mean you can't find one for three but usually that's uh not going to be a super elaborate long book right that's going to be on the upper end and then um consider sharing why you want to publish your book so that can help uh, maybe your budget's not their budget but if they feel passionate because of why you're doing it that could that can mean the difference of them wanting to work with you all right so some of the top three tips I have of vetting and researching illustrators is Check their online presence. You know, do they have that portfolio website? How active are they? You know, how long has that account been open? Research their portfolio work. So do they have a consistent style within one project? Are they using, you know, check for AI, clip art, plagiarizing? And do they show uh, any progress stages? And that's getting a little harder because people are trying to work around it. But, um, you know, AI is creating like videos that look like illustrating videos. It's just like stop it already um so just trying to make sure that you're doing some due diligence there and i have a whole other kid lit tuesday um last month that we talked about avoiding fraud scams and everything so if you want to learn a lot more about this stuff then go to there because we don't have time for that and then look into published work so check out the quality of their published books that they've illustrated or do they have good reviews how many reviews and can they provide any references so those are all great things as you're looking at different illustrators to try to find one that's um, going to work for you. So this is a little bit about artificial intelligence. I think a lot of people can start to identify it. You know, they're not going to, it's unethical. There's a lack of consistency uh, within, you know, that character design. Um, it's just pretty much impossible. Um, you're unable to copyright your images if you use artificial intelligence in your book. Um, they have flooded the market. They looked pretty much very similar and so people are kind of getting tired of that already um if there's errors uh, a lot of times it's not easily editable and then they kind of have like a very soulless flat like just they don't engage and connect with audiences um and the more and more people are boycotting ai so i know like i will not support ai clip art stuff like that so um and then clip art is just when you take pre-made images and you just kind of layer them on top of each other. So um, that can la land you in legal trouble if you don't have the right licensing purchase, which often they don't. And then um, it's very generic and and just looks, it looks really bad. So I, like I said, I have a whole thing on that, even given examples of those 
And of course, plagiarism is when they use somebody else's art pretending it's their own to try to get, um, try to get, you know, business or at least to take your money and run. So, um, there's reverse Google uh, image search that you can do to check, help, help find out those people. All right. So another thing is as you are interacting with illustrators, consider if they are acting professionally. So it's really important. I mean, everybody, you know, it's, it's okay to be casual, right? You know, use little emojis and stuff like that. I mean, it's the kidlet industry where we're allowed to be a little casual and fun, but are they respectful and friendly when they're replying to you or other people? Um, you know, if you send them a message or an email, like in their preferred way, like you're not just like randomly sending them a DM and not telling them because that can get lost. But, you know, if you're sending them a message in one of their for formats, like their email or whatever, are they replying timely? Are they thoughtfully answering your questions? Um, if you like had a phone call or a video call, which I, I really highly recommend video call, um, did they show up on time? Were they prepared for the call? Um, do you feel confident in them and trust them? Like, you know, what does your gut say? Did you both connect and communicate easily? So, you know, did you have a free communication or did it feel like, you know, it was, they're more combative or maybe they're just like lackluster, not really answering you, uh, your questions and stuff. And then do you, do you understand their process? Like, were they communicating their process to you? Um, in a clear way that you understand and willing to answer your questions so you understand. And then what uh, will they provide and sign a detailed contract? So that's really important that they provide the contract because it's their service they're, they're offering. And then it needs to be detailed in terms of like, it has the stuff needed, you know, like, does it have a clause for what if I want to cancel or does it have, you know, the payment terms in there, you know, the, the really important stuff, right. Is that it's in there. Um, and then do they offer pay secure payment options? So are they going pay me via cash app or like some other weird way um, that seems like you have, to, you have to sign up for to get payment to them? Or is it like a PayPal or secure credit card like through Square or something where it's like a legit professional way of getting paid? Um, now, sometimes with my authors, after we've done business for a while, then like they know I get a lot of fees and they know that, you know, we work well together and it's trustworthy. So then they'll send it, especially smaller amounts. Like if they want to add on something that's $50 or something like that, they'll pay me via other ways. Cause I know I get like crazy fees through PayPal and Square, but I do that because it protects the author. So if they're paying me a thousand dollars for a, a down payment or uh, installment and, you know, I get sick and I'm in the hospital or something, I can't finish your book. They can easily go to PayPal or Square and say, hey, I want to, you know, just beat this charge and get the money back quicker, whereas I might not be able to get to it and handle it or something. So it just kind of protects them. It gives them an out if I don't fulfill my end of the the, the bargain. Um, will they be willing to sign NDA, non-disclosure agreement? And do they demonstrate kindness on social media? So those are all really important to be looking out for. Um, now that... So once you've done all that, you've found some illustrators on these different methods, you've kind of checked and vetted them, and now you've got like three to five different illustrators. Um, uh, let's see, there's a question. Does the author or illustrator provide the contract? So that would be the illustrator. Um, so for the terms of rights, and I'm not, I'm not like, you know, there's no legal... Uh, advice being given here but just in general so the rights that the the illustrators should would often keep their rights to their work so how it works is the illustrator creates the art and that's theirs right but they're paying them to do that and so you they're giving you a license to print that work and sell it because I could, you could commission me for like a portrait or something and you would use it for personal use. You would hang it up in your, in your house and that's all you would do with it. So that's just like a personal use, you know, commission. So what you're doing with an illustrator is you're using it for printing in a book to make a profit. And so when you're doing that, you're printing it, you know, many, many times and, and over and over again, and you get to use it. So, so we license it for you to do that. And then further, if you want to print it on like merchandise and sell that merchandise, whether it be stickers or shirts or whatever, so then that would be a commercial um, license 
that you can purchase as well, or you can combine it together to begin with. Um, and then there's the copyright. So the copyright is the illustrators by law immediately when they create something that's theirs, unless they're doing like a, they're working for a company or something that's called work for hire, that everything while they're under company time is the company's. And that's a whole other thing, but we're just talking about like independent people here. Um, so it's theirs and they get that copyright their entire life plus like 70 years. So if you want to buy out the full copyright, um, you would need to pay like two to three times more for like the project because you're basically taking away any potential to make any income on that first for their the rest of their life plus 70 years for their, you know, so it's kind of a big deal. Um, I know some people with series, um, they might have like the same characters, right? And so you might want to buy the copyright on just the character designs. You don't have to do it for all the images. You can do it for just the character designs, which means then you own those characters and then you can do what you want with them. You can have another artist down the line, redraw them a different way or to, to choose a different illustrator, draw them. Um, and so then you kind of own, it's like your IP, your intellectual property. So you could definitely do that. And I would do it just for the characters, unless you had the money to buy for everything. Cause that's, you know, if a project costs 5,000 and you want full copyright, it's going to be like 10 to 15, depending on the, that it should be. Some authors will give it away, not realizing. And that's not right. Like if you, it, it, I'm sorry, illustrators, if the illustrator is just giving you the copyrights cause they don't understand. And so it's on the, author to kind of be having integrity and saying wait wait no no don't do that <laughs> i do want to pay you something for it so let's come up with a reasonable number right so and then most authors do not ask for an nda um i think i've had it happen once maybe and i'm always happy to sign an nda and it's something that can protect you but at the end of the day like if someone wants to steal your stuff um they're probably not caring about laws that much so it's like um, it's, it's a risk whenever you share your manuscript, uh, your art, whatever it is, it's a risk. Um, you can do things like NDAs, watermark, you know, your work and things like that. You can, um, put glazing over it. So AI doesn't steal it. But at the end of the day, if someone really wants your work, like they're going to figure a way to get it right or use it. And they don't care about loss because they're breaking the law to begin with. So why would they care if there's an NDA? So, at the, you just have to be careful like who you're sending it to you can do the nda which kind of helps deter you know some people um you can also send it off to get copyrighted with the u.s copyright um office if you're in the u.s and um that can give you a little bit more peace of mind and, the, and then once your book is made i believe that's when you send it off to u.s congress um just for prosperity stake but yeah and most authors don't ask for that but um it's always an option and it's not a problem to do so um, let's see here. So when you narrow it down from five or three or two illustrators and you're like, I'm not sure when to choose. Of course, I would look at the, the any estimates you've gotten carefully. Um, you know, what are they including? You know, how much revisions, um, you know, they, they accounting for, um, like what's their process to like, are they going to, to do like the thumbnailing process or, you know, they're just going to go straight into the sketches um, one by one, you know, like maybe one process works for you better than another. Um, and thinking about the pricing, are they fair and reasonable for the, for the work? You know, are they overcharging, undercharging? Is it the right amount? And then are they available for when you want to get started? So if you have two of them, they're pretty much the same, except for one's available now and one's available in three months, you know, that could be a deciding factor. Um, how many published books have they illustrated? So is this their first one or have they done one to three or five or are they like a season pro like uh, Terry here? So, <laughs> so <laughs> um, it just, you know, that can, that can make a big difference, especially as a first time author, you know, you might not want to choose a new one or maybe you're fine with you both figuring down the, along the way, but that, that could be a deciding factor. How do their workflow process compare? So we kind of talked about that. And then what is their copyright and licensing policies or like what's their terms, right? And so you can think about what they're offering to you at what pricing. Because again, that's a, that's kind of an extra thing on top of commissioning. We kind of include it in the price of the illustration, but it's actually, it's not just our hourly, it's the licensing that we're charging for when we, we say this is how much it is per page. 
Um, at least I don't include it as a separate thing. Maybe I should, but I don't. Um, and so um, you kind of have to think about what terms they're offering you. And then um, will they let you see every uh, stage of the process or not? And again, that could be your preferences. So a quick rundown on the pricing. So just so you know what's fair, what's not fair. Um, think about this. The illustration process takes about three to six plus months. I mean, depending on if they're doing traditional or a lot much more elaborate style, like, you know, are they doing realistic or are they doing much more simplistic style? Um, it could be a big variance of time, but it does take a while. I mean, minimum, I, I haven't done any book less than three months and even a short one because there's some back and forth and you're waiting on the author to get back to you. And there's like revisions, uh, here and there. And so there's, there's always like delays, right. That you're trying to like, make sure the book is correct and, and good and not just get it out there as quickly as possible. So and they can usually work maybe one to two children's books at a time. I don't know, Terry, with you being such an expert, maybe you're you're doing more than that. But I know I've just gotten to the point where I can work on two. Like I haven't been able to go. That's enough. Like that's a lot for my brain to handle because I really want to be in that world, you know, as I'm illustrating, coming with ideas and brainstorming. And, you know, each book is slightly different for me because I'm trying to like base it off of like, what the author wants so like to try to keep in that mindset it's it's hard so two two for you as well terry okay well that makes me feel better that i'm like this is a lot for me so i thought maybe as i got better i could do more but that's good to know i don't have to do more <laughs> um and then um you know requested samples and sketches are not free that's what the portfolio is for if you want to see their work that's what the portfolio but if you want something special as an author, like, hey, can you make this page in my book? Can you do a uh, design of my character? I want to see what it's like. And that's totally great because I think it's a great idea to sort of like kind of test drive the illustrator because before you commit to $5,000 plus project, it might be good to make sure that, you know, they're going to produce something that you love. And so that's great, but they're just, they're not free. I've seen it so often that illustrators will offer it for free or the author asks for it for free. They should not be free because they are working. Um, they are getting a, a custom commission. So just make sure you're paying them. And then um, I know that they're uh, in, in, in this world now, it is a global economy. So with this global economy, that means that you have people from all different um, um, countries and they have different um, living wages based on, you know, compared to your current country's um, rate uh, for your currency. So like the US dollar, for example, runs a lot further in a different country than it does here. Uh, maybe in like San Francisco is better than some middle nowhere place in the US, right? Some, some um, country place. So, you know, because demand is different. So the living cost is, the cost of living is different. And so, but it's important that you pay at least the minimum wage in your city so even if the illustrator offers lower, they say, I can do it for much lower. For one, that's a huge red flag. Are they using AI and clip art, you know, plagiarism, that kind of stuff. So just be sure of that. But it, if it's legit that they just have a much lower cost of living, consider if you are able to, to pay at least your minimum wage in your city, because, you know, that's how much you would definitely have to pay if you, you got somebody here to do it. So why not just pay that? So we're not taking advantage of um, an undercharging uh, for them. So, <laughs> yes, illustrators and editors pay well with gratitude. Yes, um, we often undercharge ourselves. Um, we we charge less than what how much time we spend on it. So we're not rolling in it. That's for sure. <laughs> Terry says yes. <laughs> um, is it is it not common for the okay? So cover design here. This line is the design part. And so the book interior, I don't know why they split it apart. Maybe because um, they had it as part of like a big thing where it wasn't just for kids books. It was also, there was another um, area for like middle school and um, young adult and like um, regular novels. So maybe because cover design on those are different, like, I don't know. So like the, if you're the, a book designer, I would add these two together. Um, the cover design is just the design. The picture book illustrations is the illustrations, including uh, the pictures on the cover. So that would be like your total um, project amount. Um, 
just like with with an editor it would be all of these together i don't know why these two are separate out i i didn't create this the original information i just like reformatted it to make it look cuter because it was really ugly and hard to read so um and the way that the SCB, they did it as part of their guide and they want to make it very efficient for printing. So it was just like really boring. But um, but yeah, I would say it would be 345 for editing. And then it would be 800 to, let's see if I can do math, 1200 for your cover, your, I mean, your designing, your book designer. And then it would be three to 12 for your illustrator. No, thanks. Someone said it was very cute. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, so that's that's how that kind of I would look at it that way. Um, again, I just kind of pulled the information directly and exactly how they had it, so I didn't mess anything up. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's really important to consider that because how are you going to pay the illustrator and the editor and the designer? Because at minimum you're looking at you know a little from four thousand, and then at most, which I haven't seen too many projects go up in the twelve, but you, you know, depending on what you want, I guess. So, um, you know, somewhere in between even. And so how are you going to pay for that? There's grants, um, like my Greater Columbus Art Council, that was the organization I was thinking of. Greater Columbus Art Council does grants. I know, um, so you can look at your art councils and art organizations in your cities. And then I would also consider, um, I think Highlights has grants and I think their grants might only be for their classes. I don't know. I can't remember what I looked into, but there's other grants as well out there for your, to, to help illustrate your books. And then you could also consider like fundraising. You can have different fundraising events. You can do Kickstarter or there's a new one I've heard of. But I can't remember right now. Um, yeah. And it says art grant, but the art grant could be an author and a writer is an artist. Um, they're just writing, they're just doing their art with words, right? So just like a poet um, is an artist. So um, a writer is also an artist. And so at least for mine, they will, um, that's part of it. So I would definitely look and see what other grants are out there that you could qualify for, that you want to submit for. Um, you could do a Kickstarter. There's like other ones out there like that, where it's not a it's not like a GoFundMe if you don't know about Kickstarter. You probably do, but if you don't, it's not a GoFundMe type thing. It's you say, I'm going to make this book and you're going to purchase this book. And if we make my minimum, which is like $3,000 or something, $4,000, then the project will move forward. But if we only make $2,000 on the Kickstarter, like people committing to $2,000, then it's not successful and you don't, you're not out any money. So um, it's a great way to kind of basically get pre-orders to get hype for it. Um, they do take a percentage. So, you know, keep that in mind. Um, you could obviously do that on your own, but it's just kind of a well-known platform um, to kind of like third party, make sure everybody does what they're supposed to do kind of thing. So it kind of gives some confidence and trust if you're not really well-known um, yet in the industry or have a big following or something like that. Um so there's other ways too. Obviously, you can get um, funding from like have people invest um, that you know, like your friends and family, or ask them for pre-orders. Um, you know, there's just like there's like lots of creative ideas out there to to do this. So I would not suggest ever going into debt for it. Um, that would be your own pusher choice. But I don't I don't think it this is what it's. It, don't spend money on creating a book that you don't consider like that you can lose. So think of it like if you're going on vacation, you're not going to get that money back. But, you know, this is something like that. So um, kind of handle that. So I'm pretty certain this is a no, but checking illustrators are pay up front, no royalties. So for self-publishing, it's kind of, yeah, it's different than traditional publishing. So traditional publishing, they get a an advance. So it could be a $5,000 advance. And then if the book sells enough, then they pay out their advance so then now they can get royalties so what that means is if the book is ten dollars and it's a ten dollar um royalty so that means they get a, a dollar per book if i'm doing my math correct so then after five thousand books have sold now they can start getting the dollar per book in royalty so that's how how this the ba a basic version of uh, royalties is so with self-publishing that can be very hard to do that um, 
So what I typically do is you do a flat fee for the actual services and everything, the licensing, but the licensing isn't perpetually forever. It's not like you always just have this licensing because then I basically should have just sold the copyright, right? So I usually do the licensing for like five years, maybe three, five years, depending on what it was. And then, um, or X number of books sold, whichever comes first. Um, and usually it's the five years and then they can renew the licensing or if say the book took off and they're in the next, you know, Eric Carl out there and their, their book's doing amazing, you know, I should also benefit in, in that. And, and we can talk about if you want to do royalties or the licensing much more, you know, I would work on each, I would work with each author to figure out what's fair and I want it to be fair. Like, I don't want it to be that I'm nickel and dying forever in their entire life. But I do want there to be a door open that if the book takes off that, hey, you know, illustrations have a big part of that. So I think that's really fair. And um, you just write the contract that way. So. Yeah, so illustrators are paid up front. So usually with the payment plans um, that illustrators often is that they want 33 to 50% upfront as a deposit. And then at milestones, they might get a payment or two more. And then the final payments due before they release the final high res documents to the author. So like, um, you've seen all the images, but they're like water, they have watermarks on them or they're low res. And so then once you approve everything is good to go, then you, they would, um, you, they would receive their last payment, the illustrator would. And that would finalize everything and everything is approved. And so then they will send you all of the high res files then, because if they were to send it ahead of time, there's no incentive for the author to pay. And unfortunately, you know, we just have to protect ourselves. We, we would hope every author is amazing, but you know, just like there's bad illustrators out there, there's bad authors and bad everybody, right? So we just have to protect ourselves. Um, and so that's kind of a good way to do that. And then for me, um, like right now I'm booking the next um, author in March of next year. So I don't want to say no to somebody else because someone has took that spot. So then I just do 10% down as a, as a non-refundable deposit for that later date. So that's something I do to basically make sure they're serious, that they're not going to get to March and be like, you know, actually I changed my mind. And now I'm scrambling to find somebody else when I said no to three other people. And so um, that's kind of what I do is assurances that they're serious. Um, so you might find something like that out there as well. I'm not sure. Um, the biggest thing is just to keep it fair for everybody. So, you know, you can have a conversation with each illustrator and each one could be a little bit different or they may be willing to do something slightly different for you. Um, but it, the most thing is to keep it fair and, and, and keep everybody protected. So the last stage after you figured out everything, you've talked with them about pricing and terms, um, you know, how involved in the process, you found them to be professional, you vetted them, they seem legit, you love their style, um, you know, it's appropriate for your book and everything. So now you just have to choose. Now, say you still have two to three people left that met all the requirements. Well, you're in a great spot because no matter who you choose, it's probably going to be a great person because you've already done all this work to like find them and and do and all this vetting. And so now it's just a matter of like, you know, you know, I don't know, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, I did a blog post about this and I said, uh, Thunderdome, Illustrator Thunderdome, two illustrators enter, one illustrator leave, two illustrators enter, one illustrator leave. Um, I don't really think people's want to do that, but, um, you know, it, it can be difficult to make choices and, and the whole publishing journey is a lot of choices for authors. And so there can be definitely decision fatigue where you're just like, okay, I cannot make another choice. And so then I would kind of wait and just wait till you have that ability to just not maybe choose someone randomly. So I, if you have more than one illustrator at the end of this whole process, then you're just in a great spot because that means you found you found a lot of great ones. Um, here are, I, I have every month um, in the illustrator directory dot com. Um, I, I pick three illustrators that have shown themselves to to have a lot of uh, quality work. And from what I can tell, they, they seem to be a really legit person and, and someone that would be great to work with. So, um, Vitor Lopez, hopefully I'm saying other names correctly. Um, so this is a one that we spotlight and he has done, um, 
he's been working all of these three actually have been very uh in the industry for a long time it seems so uh really great work that he's doing and then patty argoff has done a lot and i think she's actually done more than just children's books she's done like textbooks and uh posters and games and and all i mean just a lot of stuff i mean her i might have even seen her work growing up because like these fish look so familiar like that style i don't know if it's just like that particular style from from before but it just looks very familiar to me so who knows <laughs> um and then there's astrid and i'm not gonna vote Vo winkle again sorry if i butchered it but um they've been working for nearly 30 years so um and i love that they love drawing horses that was their first thing because i love drawing horses too but um but yeah so and they have a, as you can see a very uh detailed uh style and i believe they use uh i mean it looks like watercolor to me uh, i could be wrong but really really cool different illustrators and i think they're all from across the globe so you don't have to stick with just you know your own country anymore and um real quick before we get into any final questions but of course today and then we have upcoming kidlet tuesdays so if any of these kind of strike your fancy with uh tips for markets and fairs so that's like local markets and book fairs and and things like that um and then so some tips for for how to do that and and get the most out of it and then how to get started as an illustrator so uh, for those newbie illustrators out there or like people that haven't illustrated a book before or who's an artist or maybe not an artist and they want to become an illustrator, that would be a great session for you guys. And then I wrote a book, Now What? So that's great for an author that has not yet published a book um, or maybe, you know, you have, but you didn't love the process. Maybe it didn't turn out the way you wanted. Maybe you accidentally chose a vanity publisher or who knows what, right? So um, that would be great because it's going to give a guide for that. And then there's going to be more uh, in 2025 as well. So, all right. So Q&A, uh, let's see here. So this might be a designer question, but I've gotten a mixed answer. So I thought I'd ask. So this is from Jamie. So um, kids books are traditionally 32 pages, not including the title page, back matter, et cetera. With, in that case, the the author is working with 30 pages they might need to be illustrated is that fairly accurate um i think for 32 pages it's 28 i believe it's 28 that the illustrator um would typically illustrate so unless you want them to illustrate the title there's something for the title page and the copyright page it would be 28 pages of like storybook pages so i know that um most like publisher printers want to do in quantities of eight. So that's why you kind of see like 32 or 24 because it's in quantities of eight based on the way that the the pages, you know, one, two, three, four, and then there's there's two. Like they do a whole big one. So so there's eight total. Um so and that can be that can be different though. You know, especially with print on demand, it's a little less stringent. Uh, you just end up with like extra white pages if you're not you're not quite on that quantity of eight. You'll just they'll just add in extra white pages. So you do want to be careful with that. Um, your book designer should be able to help guide you on that as well. So I mean, yeah, that that would be definitely a question on your specific story, um, and how you want it laid out. So another question is how much direction from writers is fair and how much is annoying? Like if I write a manuscript, should I add illustrator notes under any pages that I have something specific I'm looking for, or do I just let the illustrator imagine and do their thing? Yeah, that's definitely a very common question. And I think a little bit is fine. So like if you imagine, because when you're writing a kid's book, it's a show don't tell for the most part. It's not a hundred percent of the time. The editor should also help you with that a little bit as well to like take out. Um, she was holding a red balloon. Well, I mean, you see her holding the red balloon. You don't need to say she was holding a red balloon, right? So um, they should help remove some of those extra words. And so then now you want to tell the illustrator to illustrate the girl is holding red balloon without the word saying it. So you may need to give a little direction on that if that's really important to the story that she's holding a red balloon and not a blue one or a yellow one. So, or maybe that's just a really strong vision for you. So I think that's fine if you want to give some notes um, for each page and, and let them know, hey, I'm, I'm open. 
if you have other ideas and you can still veto their ideas, that's fine. But you can always just let them know, like, these are things I've thought of, but I want to, I want to hear what you have to say too. So I think that's fair to give some direction with, especially leaving it open for consideration. And then, um, yeah, the more you can let the illustrator work though, the better, um, that can definitely produce some pretty amazing results because now you're letting their creativity just, you know, and their, their unique perspective too, um, you know, their, their experiences and their, their thoughts and stuff is going to be maybe different than yours. So you could, you can have a much more well-rounded book. Um, all right. Does anybody have any other questions? It looks like someone else jumped in at one point. Uh, Annette Dixon. Thank you for coming, Annette. And um, so if you have any questions, feel free to, um, you can either unmute yourself or you can um, put them in the, put them in the chat box. Okay, question three. I have a writer who wrote a book about a troll. She was taking, she was talking to an illustrator who drafted an image that was similar to pop culture version of troll. Is that a concern? Um, there's a few different things I can think off the top of my head is, uh, is it so close to something that's already out there that it could be confused and then become a problem with copyright, you know, it, and, and it going against their intellectual property. Um, it's also about, um, you know, what do you want to communicate for like about your troll in that book, right? So if the author wants to communicate, this is just a friendly, you know, misunderstood troll. Um, you know, what kind of feelings do you want people to feel though at first? Do you want them to look at them and, and think that about them? Or do you want them to go, ooh, like that's a bad troll. And then the, the book convinces you otherwise. So I, I think it has a lot to do with what the author is trying to communicate through that character more so than, you know, is it a standardized everybody knows what a troll looks like and that's a troll because that's not necessarily a bad thing um as long as you're not infringing on intellectual property now if the author goes hey i i love that let's take it further how far can we push this like i want it to be unique like i don't want them to look at this and just think this looks like every other troll i've ever imagined like so they can give again the art director hat on and they can kind of say hey i'd like to push this further um and so that's totally fine. Just be aware that, you know, if they didn't say that ahead of time and, you know, they may incur additional like revision charges if they've already like revised it enough times. So, you know, that's always something to consider. But yeah, I think, I think it really depends. Yeah. So sometimes if you try to make it too different because jamie said that's what we worried about with the copyright but it's also a general image people expect so we weren't sure if it's a slight change on the nose would help as a basic example not sure so again do you like how does it is it like a main character where it really really matters that it is very unique to your book um do you is that something you're really striving for is it just like a background character um is it a recurring character uh, maybe it's not the main one but it's recurring um what are you going to be doing with those characters like is it something like a series and you really want to like do big printouts you know you have to decide how how important is it right so you could ask, hey, let's just take this a little bit further, make it a little bit more unique, you know, differentiate it from what's out there. And sometimes it's not a bad thing to be more similar to what's out there because people can then easily identify it. So, yeah, I think it really depends on that unique situation. And it, the best thing to do is to communicate with the with the illustrator. So I think sometimes people are really afraid. They want to like hurt their feelings or they don't want to make them upset with you, whatever. But it's really important, and I always stress this to every author I work with, please communicate with me if you're not 100% happy with something. If you're not sure about something, you have questions about something, you want something changed, it's better that you communicate with me than you get to the end of the project and everything's wrapped up and then you're like, every time you look at that book, you're upset about it. Like, that's not going to be a good thing. So I would rather you tell me and risk, you know, me being a little butthurt about it or upset 
you know, in that moment, but getting over it very quickly because I realized, hey, you know, we're we're collaborating together. So it's it's much better in the long run. And and the illustrator should be very um forgiving on that front if if the author is communicating something. Um yeah, so I can definitely share that with with her terry and then um yeah, if there's if there's any other questions i'm happy to to answer them i don't know why it keeps changing okay there we go yeah and if you have any questions afterward um if you're in one of the facebook groups you can definitely ask those questions there and i'll try to get to them and um, there's other people in the group that can answer them as well. And of course, you can always reach out to me. Uh, I'll do my best to get back with you as quickly as possible, uh, like via email or Facebook or whatnot. So um, but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up today. And I really appreciate those who were able to come out. And I know it's in the middle of the day, so that can be tough. So I really appreciate that. And I, I was working on um other people's schedules as well like melissa's typically here and she's west coast time and this is just what the time works out for her um but if you do want sometimes especially starting next year if you do want some of those times in the evening um, or maybe on a weekend uh, i would love to hear your feedback so that we can get more people involved um each week and have more uh interaction and like networking and things like that so uh thank you so much annette and terry and jamie for coming and i hope you all have a wonderful day and this will be up uh available uh, i'll send you the link for you to view this um i usually post it on uh, youtube so that you can even comment there too with your questions um and then i just link that um to the kid lit tuesdays page so you don't have to go and find me on youtube um but i'll send an email with um the link to um this video as well as any kind of resources or things that we've kind of talked about extra i'll try to like pull all that from the video and also send that in the email and if you could invite other people um, that you think would benefit from these, especially with some of the um, topics coming up, uh, feel free to share kidlittuesdays.com and encourage them to register. It's, 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 it's free to register. I want to offer this as free as long as possible. Um, and so, you know, definitely get them to, to register and, I'll, you know, get some questions answered and, you know, be able to, to learn more about the kid lit industry because it is very complex. Um, yeah, so the the replay will be public. Um, I thought about putting it behind like you only the people registered can get to it. I'm like, I'll oh, just forget it. Like, I would rather more people learn than to uh, gatekeep the information. And so that link to the replay is available to anyone that has a link. So you can, uh, if they go to Kidlet Tuesdays, they can get to it. If they go to my uh, YouTube, they can get to it. If they have the link, they can get to it. So it will be accessible for everyone. And yeah, like I said, I know it's difficult to have them in the day. So that's why I, I don't want to gatekeep that as well, because I know it can be difficult to, to do that. So thank you so much for coming again. And uh, I hope you have a, a great rest of your day and uh, happy, happy writing, happy illustrating, happy publishing. There's so many exciting things uh, that you can do uh, in the kid lit industry. And uh, I look forward to seeing more of your, your wonderful creations. So take care. Bye.